Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Ascension Diaries channel and the educational or theoretical conversations that we have here on a regular basis. This is a diary for myself to and do a personal study on myself with my curiosities with space weather as a as a heliophysicist sort of perspective. I don't have heliophysicist in my background per se. I have psychology and education in my background, but I have been studying the solar cycles for, I want to say like six, seven years. So I am giving back to the community in this way because people ask me so often to clarify about the things I post online, to share about the events and anomalies that I'm regularly seeing on all of these public resources. So on these public resources, we have a variety of directions. You can look at the sun and the earth in correspondence, like the one we're seeing on the screen right now is a popular one for predictive models of when solar radiation is going to move past the earth. And just for brief showing you first off, this is the sun, the yellow dot here. And most of these will have a legend. So if you see it online, there's going to be a legend and you'll know how to read these. But I have screenshotted the legend out of this photo. So I have to tell you, so this center area is always the sun. And then you can see the waves that are rippling out from it. They spiral because the sun is rotating and the waves continue to spiral out in whatever direction that inertia takes them. And sometimes it's right past our planet. And this is a wave or an example and an image from a large event we had on this, this August 1st, August 1st, 2023. If you can see the numbers here at the top, this is right at the same time, five o'clock my time, Pacific Standard Time is zero UTC. That's when the day begins again with UTC. So this was right as the day moved into either the, I think the first and from, from July. So we had this event. Then, you know, eight days later, we had this catastrophe that's happening on the Hawaiian islands. And we have also fires from that point. We have them around the Lake Okanagan area. We have some in Yellowknife. There's some in Spain. There's some in Greece, Italy, and I'm hearing actually many more places. We had quite a few uh, earthquakes and eruptions also during this period of time between this the first and today, which is the 18th. Today, we have some research that I have to show you, which is great for this this class, because when I post online, I mostly post whenever something big is about to happen or whenever there's any anomalies, because that's what I notice that audience usually responds to most with their mind, body, spirit, with their physiology, with their psychology and with their group dynamic. So I call what I do every month on the 18th guardian training, because no matter what, you know, your relationship to other beings you are likely some sort of elder or protector at this point. And therefore to have this awareness about when the sun is releasing these ex this extra radiation, how long it's going to take and what is likely going to be stirred up from that when it comes to fires, I mean, lightning, I should say, lightning, fires, earthquakes, volcanic activity, which then it goes with, you know, tsunamis and, gosh, issues with evacuation, like these sort of things, you know, the dust storms, uh, the shifting of the temperatures and so on on the planet, all of the stuff that you watch on the news about weather on earth is influenced first by what the sun is doing for the most part. And that's kind of, this is not openly discussed. I want to say on the news, like you don't see charts like this showing you the solar activity as much showing you the coronal holes and the sunspots, which we'll get into. But this is a gap that I'm just filling because I have an interest in it. I'm not doing it with any sort of feelings of responsibility, I would say. It's truly my passion. And I am a passionate person in general. And I wanted to become an educator because I wanted to share my own 
I want to say passion for learning and for discovery and research with the, our youth and with their families and so on, and just kind of keep the vibe high and keep science in a way and full philosophizing a free roaming space where every individual can begin a case study about a theory that they have and pursue it along the lines of the laws of like science, which is other people should be able to replicate your data. Other people should be able to test what you're testing. So in the more gentle sense, I do these classes to show you what theories I'm working with, what sort of directions I take my research, what sort of anomalies are important to me. And then you take all that information and you go out there in the world. I also will give you all the resources I follow. That's in the link below this video, my linktree.com slash Ascension Diaries. That's coming up in another slide, but all of my resources are in there. So you can just pick up all this public information yourself, comb through it because you're going to find stuff I can't. That's just usually the way that's how, why we want other people to continue doing studies and you know, get the equipment that you can see the sun with and things like that, like participate in your own creative way and then dump it into my telegram chat room. That's kind of the point. So I'm going to get into all that now while we move on, but I titled today's class space weather case study data about sovereign gold. And so again, your sense of exploration and curiosity is that sovereign gold that alchemical experience of like living and being a soul. And if this resonates with you, this research and this pursuit of information and the constant watching of the weather, that sort of feedback loop of our planet, the sun, the constellations, the seasons, and your own psyche, that's kind of what I do. And I've developed into other skills like being a psychic medium and so on. And that was also for service to others to be able to connect sort of dots that are a little bit difficult to reach sometimes in the density of the scientific community, where now they've had to basically account for spirit or energy in a way, this energy of the soul as even having its own weight uh, from a dead body to an alive body, like the weight change is there. So there is a physical sort of aspect to the soul and the spirit. So those of us who've ever witnessed somebody dying or even an animal or so on, you can see the shift. And that sort of space is also discussed in light around my blog and so on, mostly because the information I want to talk about is, is about people who are alive about this earth, about our current situation with the sun. And I'm concerned about those who are living in this reality and then what they're doing with their time, how empowered they feel with their time, how much of their own gold or their own human attention or their currency, their current, are they investing in healthcare that is counterproductive because you're dealing with solar radiation uh, instead of some sort of genetic issue. You know what I mean? Like you have to, I'm ha you have to add this as environmental factors to your life and to all medical, you know, personal observations in my opinion. And if you're a guardian of somebody or, you know, of animals or whatever land, you're still responsible in my opinion, to kind of pick up what you need to know about your environment. And this is something that I think you should know. It is relevantly happening. I have resources and data to follow up that the sun is in a way causing us to have these waves of symptoms and disturbances on the planet. And now that we're in solar cycle 25, so there's been 25 cycles of 11 years that have already been studied and I want to say publicly published and is publicly recognized as mainstream science. We're on solar cycle 25. We're peaking in that right now. So the data right now is super rich, super interesting. We're watching the planet basically on fire and then hurricane season's coming. Like it will, if this is the peak of the solar cycle, then we should probably have a peak of weather as what I'm saying. It's pretty easy to see more energy causes more friction and movement. So we're just becoming aware of this. Now I'm helping in my way. You might be following other people. I follow a lot of heliophysicists on Twitter, which is now x.com. 
and I follow their research and their actual reporting and many of the reporting websites and those concerned in the field, I'm following them to see what they say and what they're thinking, because I'm a little bit woo woo compared to that, because I have had a pineal gland, you know, crown chakra, kundalini opening experiences that I I also talk about and share and deal with people who are sensitive because of these experiences they've engaged in and their kundalini and their aura and everything is very sensitive. So those who are sensitives really like my blog and like these videos too. So if this is all sounding good, let's move on to the next slide. And I'm going to teach you how to read my most popular and popular, the most popularized resource out there that can be the most controversial, the most woo woo and the most aggressively, I want to say tossed out of the pile of data for the daily weather. So it's, you're either tossing it and being like, this is stupid, or you're making some crazy woo woo video interpreting what you're seeing in the shapes and lines and editing the photo to mirror it and doing all this distorting of just a simple chart that is giving substantial information without the need of manipulation. So that's my belief. And so this is what we research is today's chart gave us a wonderful example of why we watched the anomalies. And that's my most favorite parts, the anomalies. So we have been dealing with people who are, like I said, don't know how to read scientific charts and are publicly sharing as if they are some sort of authority or know what they're talking about, about this data that is copyrighted. It's from a Russian university in Tomsk, Russia. They have multiple interpretations of the data they're collecting from potentially 206, I think is the number stations around the earth. It could just be localized at the university. I've heard that as well, but the university itself does claim on its website. It's collecting data from 206 oddish um, stations around the world. There is that's on their website. I haven't checked recently if it's still there. There's been recent drama actually with this because the last one of these classes, the rhythm training in June, we skipped July in June had a, the biggest anomaly I've ever seen on this resource, which caused a lot of, I want to say the American, um, even the programmers and so on that were pulling this data and putting it into apps, pulling this data and putting it onto Twitter, pulling this data and putting it into bots for Telegram. People I knew from their act and their desire to like make this information more public and more accessible using modern solutions, they were having a lot of drama with this because people were hacking the email of the university, even like there was real drama and the, the chart stopped uploading and now they are. And this is one of the first blackouts I've kind of seen since then where the data is just missing. So this is an excellent example of what I post on online because it's like, hey, there's some missing hours in this resource that measures the electromagnetic frequency of the air basically between the earth or the ground and the ionosphere, which is the highest ion layer of our our planetary shielding system. It's the highest layer. And that whole area is where radio waves are all transmitting. There is a lot of importance of that area, the atmosphere and all the electromagnetic frequencies we can see and not see. It's a very important space. So when there is missing data on any of the resources, it's interesting because usually it correlates to a bunch of people saying, oh, I felt really weird today. And that's just the data I've been collecting. That's just honest. But if you need to read this yourself, I will show you the resources in a second, but I want to show you just the basics of reading charts is there is a, there's a, oh my gosh, I think I just screwed up that too. Oh no, I wrote it wrong. That's hilarious. I literally just told you that I know what I'm doing, but I don't, that's so embarrassing, but Hey, it happens. I'll be able to tell you what's wrong. So I can't. I'm not, the show must go on. So just ignore X axis because X axis is the bottom and Y axis is go up. So I switched that, unfortunately, unless I'm crazy and I'm not remembering that correctly again, but that's what I understand. That's how you read charts is the bottom <laughs> is an axis and going upward is an axis. 
That's what they call them. So here along the bottom is the time measured in UTC plus seven, because that's Tomsk University. That's where they're at. That's their time zone. So we have to convert basically here in the USA, almost 12 hours to the opposite side of the earth to understand what time that this information was no longer uploading, just as an example here. There was no uploading information between hour 14 and hour 18 in the last 24 hours. So that's an anomaly. And then you can see afterwards when it started uploading again, that there was a lot of these very perfectly placed vertical lines, which is the y-axis, which means, and this little symbol over here on the top left is Hertz. So the y-axis measures Hertz. It measures Hertz, and that's a Russian symbol for Hertz up there in the top left. I have confirmed that with a Russian-speaking person, multiple. That's just, you know, that's physics. You know, it's Hertz, that's frequency. So zero at the top means no brain waves, no activity, complete dead nothing. And then it goes up to 40 Hertz, which is 40 rotations per second. That's how they measure a Hertz is rotations per second. So from zero, so no rotating, to 40 rotations per second, that's the amount of frequencies that we're measuring the activity of over time, over time. And the color is the amplification, the intensity of those frequencies. How loud is that? What is, how loud is that frequency getting? And the next charts cover that, at least for the for four of these frequencies, which are the four first Schumann resonances. But that's not even as important because really this chart is amazing because when you start seeing activity, you will start feeling it in your mind, body, spirit, probably. You'll look on the chart and be like, okay, there is something going on. That's really all you need to know. You just got to look at it, see if there's anything weird like this. Data is blacking out. Whoops. <laughs> You're seeing a bunch of you know, vertical lines right next to each other looks like a computer, like a Xerox machine or something, more blackouts of data and so on. And then here on the right-hand side is just the data that's yet to be recorded. It records inward like this and will fill all itself up and then it'll reset and kind of go to half mark again and begin filling up data again. So if you're seeing it being weird, if you see black on the right-hand side, that's just data that hasn't been uploaded yet for the most part. Also keep track of the time because sometimes it'll just stop uploading and you won't notice and the time has just been moving on, but the chart isn't moving on in time. So that's another way to know we're in an active blackout of information, but this is not the end all be all chart of the world, managing the world and our whole ionosphere. It's just one resource coming out of Russia. And there's one out of Italy. There's two out of Italy that we have, we're watching. And there's a few in the other parts of the world, but they, the data is like two days behind. So it's really tricky to use it because it's kind of old and non-usable by the time it's up, which doesn't help anybody in my opinion, but I'm allowed to have my opinions in the field I work in and study in I by now, I assume. So take it as it comes. I'm just trying to be candid with you. This is what also makes people lose their minds. They, the esoteric community, which I am a part of, like I mentioned, I am actually experiencing psychic phenomena and do readings for people at all the time to contact their passed on loved ones, do readings for them with my cards and with, you know, the ability to listen and to perceive. And I just, I have that. So I am also listening and perceiving this metaphysically in a way and in a spiritual sense, but my, I want to say impact or the results from this are very pragmatic. They're very scientific in a way and very business as usual and keep people calm, keep people responsible with this study and don't let any other opinions or loud naysayers or you know, doomsdayers is also a major issue. If you notice somebody who's trying to use this data to prove to you that the world is ending or something horrible is going to happen, that's their reality that they're actively consenting to. So do not 
participate in that if that doesn't resonate with you. If you want to go down with these people and they're flaming pain, you know, spiral, then go ahead. It'll teach you what it needs to teach you. But if you're not resonating, there's plenty of other researchers who do not have a doomsday idea about the solar cycle and about our world right now. There's plenty of others. So if you're getting stuck in that loop, get yourself out <laughs> the best you can, Sp you know, spread out your options. Like I said, I, I retweet a bunch of them on Twitter. So just create my Twitter and you can find other heliophysicists who actually do have an education and are participating in this and doing public talks and so on. So anyways, this is not the end all be all chart, but it is a fantastic one for our whole social dynamic that has begun to be quite the momentum. And don't listen if you don't need to, to listen any, any ways that they're referring to amplitude. People are really confused. Like they, they'll use Hertz to mean amplitude. So they'll say, oh, went up to 190 Hertz, the Schumann resonance. And you're like, no, that's not what you just read on that chart. I'm sorry, but it isn't. And so you have to be discerning basically about the data you're sharing. And if you have a background in science and specifics, you know, and stats and so on, science and stats, you have an actual background of this. I hope that this helped. I'm sorry I mislabeled X and Y, y axis. I'm really sorry about that. Very embarrassing. Don't know how that happened, but it is good to laugh at yourself in the field. Always you make mistakes. That's why more people are watching and looking over. If you see what I'm saying in this presentation, you're like, absolutely not. That's not true. Please say something. I'm, I'm, I'm an adult. I want to do well. I want to be clear. So thank you for that feedback also. So what else do we need to know in this presentation? So I'm having a problem in a way as an individual tackling this field of research. And I'll tell you why. First of all, this is becoming a hot topic situation the weather in general. I don't know if you've noticed, but it's kicked up the last couple of weeks. And it's not, I would say, without its teeth and poison, like it's snarling. There is a lot of rebuff and communication about weather and what it is, what's causing it, what's going on. So I'm not here to try and push back on any of that. I am also a voice adding to the group of information available. You make your own decisions. That's what I do. So since this is becoming a hot spot, which I want you to notice the word hot spot, please, because that's a major key. And that's like, that's the psychic mediumship coming through being like, Hey, this is a pattern I'm noticing that doesn't have anything to do with the numbers, but is a word and is a term that is coming through and is relevant to the weather right now for our planet. Cause I'm actively reporting on this still, even though I'm teaching about it too. This mainstream broadcasting, which is broadly casting ideas over the population of intellectual beings, you know, uh, all of the able-bodied people who can witness media basically are being just, you know, disseminated the terms and the, the information current or being approved of right now with the weather weather narrative which is fine like they've always done that but then there's people who are like oh i have more questions than that and they begin researching and all that information sorry something's just got in my eye some all that information is available online already you can find it yourself but there's also a lot of social media influencers that will literally populate out of nowhere whenever there is a decent enough anomaly in the mainstream space weather information. Like if there was a really large solar flare, which even most of them, they don't do that. Like there isn't some sort of media circus for that. It's just me and like a few other YouTubers are just grinding it out every day doing this earth watch interest. Basically it's a interest of ours. So we're passionately working on it every day, collecting our data and our diaries and our journals and our research is developing constantly. But these are, there's a lot of meet social media influencers who will pitch in whenever the human resonance, for example, are blasting. They will start talking about it, but they won't know what to say. You'll notice they'll just use it as like a blanket statement. And you're like, okay, cool. At least I got something out of that. You know, I'm getting some information out of that and that's wonderful. Like say what you know, will get somebody to at least check it out themselves. You don't have to be an authority or 
whatever on these topics, just spread the good news is the another term that's been coming up a lot. So I don't want to be considered some sort of authority on this topic because it is becoming mainstream. So I want to like allow that ship to sail on its own, like party carnival cruise. And I will continue in my like, you know, alternative dimension bubble, like floating along, doing my research and minding my business. You know what I'm saying? And you can, you can come along with me and do that all you like. I've created that safe space for us. So another problem that we're having is competing theories in the field. Competition is boring to me. I'm a Libra, so I'm not really here to compete with you. I'm more so here just to witness judge justice in all things. So things need to be fair. Uh, everyone needs to be able to do their research and have equal access to, you know, information in my opinion. So I'm just here to make things fair and enjoy the fairness of being an academic and a healer in a way too. We are, in my opinion, we are to compare data and theories as we research. And that's what interests me is I'm here for the conversation, comparing data and theories to expand the quality of the research. One belief I have also is that the truth doesn't need defending, which is also why I'm not here to compete. I'm not here to like fist to cuffs with anybody about what I'm researching because the truth doesn't need defending and it's going to, whatever you're meant to know or feel is going to happen to you and it'll resonate with you at whatever level. And I just have to love you for who you are and your personality as it is. So just be you resonate with what you want. I hope something from this presentation gives you something to continue on living your truth. So good work is busy with discoveries and compared studies. So we have the good work. Another term is the good work, right? That's coming through a lot also that we are doing the good work and spreading the good news. And because there is this deep depressive, like black pilling, uh, going into the abyss nonsense. And we're bringing the light back. We're bringing optimism. Like the sun is actually, you know, a representation of the most powerful electromagnetic source or life source in our environment. So that's something to be, you know, that's just scientifically <laughs> important. Uh, so we should continue to pay attention to that. And as I would say, probably prioritize it majorly. Like it should be a main part of your day is what is that big ball of crazy radiation doing? What is it up to? Makes sense to me. Hopefully it makes sense to you to keep going on with that and keep making discoveries, get creative, look for new pathways of discovery, and then compare your study with us. We love that. And we want to keep that going. The spirit of human discovery or whatever we are people. <laughs> so solar cycle and El Nino information, again, solar cycle 25, we're currently in it. We're peaking around now about now. So then that's going to start getting argued a lot is, are we peaking now? Is it going to be stronger than last time? Blah, 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 blah. Just keep your ears open. We're going to find out eventually. So we're going to find out, we're going to find out. So it's fine. You don't need to argue too much about it, but El Nino and these changes of air pressure and air warmth and density and so on on the earth is picking up. And that's, like I said, coming into the news and I don't know what I was typing there. Theories of maybe of the study or so. Yeah. These issues like the solar cycle and the El Nino and the actual weather that's like trying to be matter of fact, and like, you got to be professional and say it on the news. That's a very tight narrative. And I don't, that's not me. I'm not there. I would work in that field if I felt like that was for me. It isn't. And mainstream data is published to compare and contrast with, in, with intellectually, I don't know what happened to me when I was typing this. I'm sorry. It just it got chaotic there. I'm sorry. <laughs> Well, what I'm trying to say is that mainstream published data is going to be coming out about this, the weather changing, the heat, the cooling, the the tides, the ice melting, um, geoengineering, all these things. And this has continued to happen through my whole study. This happens and it happens on a yearly news cycle, like during hurricane season, 
everybody starts becoming a weather expert. And then, you know, then that holiday at the end of the year shows up and everybody forgets and they go do the next activity. So I don't forget and I don't celebrate those holidays. <laughs> I just read data and I just talk to people all day. So other intellectual people, I read the mainstream stuff. I look at my data. Most of the time, there's some corroboration there. There's some, it mostly makes sense. But the mainstream stuff is usually way more emotional, tries to make you have these emotions. And as you know, I just like post my things and memes and things I write that sometimes aren't even related. Like I'm just throwing information at you that I'm filtering through with this and I will continue to. But my instinct is to be like, just don't argue or get too in the face about the solar cycle or the El Nino situation or the weather changing stuff and tech and blah, blah, blah. Because that's a conversation no longer meant for me. It's like, this has to be disclosed by the mainstream now. And I get to be busy doing something, the doing the next step, basically doing the next innovation, being at the tip of that spear in a way. So people that need to know what's going on with the weather, they want to know, they're asking me, there's some more challenges with what's going on with our solar, with our weather right now. So first off is the weather, what's causing weather on earth. Rarely do people, do weather people discuss the solar emissions that NASA is posting with their LASCO, so host satellites, and they capture all this information. They put it online. Sometimes it doesn't upload, but it's mostly gets there. And people would pattern recognize if the, the weather person was like, here's the sun. Um, it just emitted this and we have a lot of lightning storms today. You know, I'm saying it would be very easy to just show people that the sun causes weather. And I think the whole idea was to kind of delete the sun out of our, our daily lives, literally, because it is this source energy. And it is, that's kind of like been the whole game has been to try and get us to forget and turn away from the natural organic situation we're in and turn towards inorganic stuff, which is you're watching videos on an inorganic screen. I'm capturing your attention using the technology as like a, a rescue mission almost because you aren't outside looking at the sun right now. You're watching this <laughs> and you're doing it. So you can then also carry that on, do that rescue mission, point people back to the sun, get sun gazing as part of your diet every day, get it on your skin. Don't wear the sunglasses on so your eyes can actually tell your brain what the heck's going on and protect your skin, all these things. But people don't know what causes weather on earth. They don't know what causes lightning, but you should look it up because it's it's basically just energy from the sun. Like it creates this friction experience and the lightning has to ground as these waves of charged particles move through the earth. This lightning has to ground in the, some of that energy, which creates the whole growing cycle and creates life on earth that does so much. So it's a beautiful cycle, but people don't get taught, which is very sad because we love beauty. We love biology. Like kids love learning. This is a wonderful topic. So I'm going to show you some pictures in a minute. Also, when you're reporting on the news, hey, the sun just did this and you get three days to ride this out, which is what I say all the time. All the other people who know space weather, it's a public fact. Like you would look up how long does a solar wind or a coronal mass ejection take to get to earth? You can Google it or whatever it'll tell you three days. It'll tell you something around that. If it tells you something else, let me know because whatever. But to me, it's pretty quick when it happens. We do feel it pretty much instantly, but then the fallout and the slower moving particles will take up to three days to move past us. But a lot of it's instant, which is again, not really talked about, but is true. It is, it is a fact. Like the light from the sun just generally takes eight minutes to get here. So it's not that far. And we're pretty much eight minutes in, unless, you know, it's being shoved out with even more force. And it's going to be faster than eight minutes. In my opinion, it's going to be pushing on that speed of light. Like, I don't know. 
it's pretty instant. Plus gravity waves is a whole thing, but you may not be sure about all that. I'm not even sure about all that, but go ahead and look it up because it's being put out there. Very smart discussions about it. It's all been very deeply discussed. So this public warning, like if we could give people three whole days to get their mind right and know like in this three-day period, we're going to be radiated more from the sun. A lot of people would feel more at ease. Their mind would have an understanding about what their body was experiencing. And that's another thing why I do the channel. So yeah, their solar wind is measured. The radio bursts are measured, coronal mass ejections, coronal holes, like all of these things shoot out extra plasma and wind, solar wind and everything at us. So that's challenge number three is that while the solar cycle is going more and more intense, it's going to its peak. I'm watching way more arms. They look like arms unraveling tentacles and arms of massive amounts of plasma, actual mass and matter from the sun's surface, just lashing out. And I posted a video of it just yesterday that we recently had that. Again, just imagine a big fiery mass of, of solar energy just getting released off of the surface of the sun, that's actual matter. In my opinion, if it's facing earth, that matter has to land here. And that's that gold also that's coming in all the time. It's this actual matter and life force and star stuff is continuing to reign over us and potentially do more than what we are being led to believe to our planet, including starting some maybe disasters or so on potentially too. While these arms of you know, superheated, super fantastic solar stuff is shooting off. I'm watching way more of those events since this last few months, way more arms of this plasma, just big juicy bits of the sun just coming right off. And we've had more solar proton events, which is again, radiations, protons rolling through earth and causing the imagery to get all staticky, causing some technological issues. Like it's very powerful stuff. So it's been fascinating. And now we are going into hurricane season here in the, in the West hemisphere. I'm going to see what else the sun's going to shoot off and how powerful those storms are going to get or not get. It's going to be fascinating. I'm just a, I'm student of this also. This is my first thorough solar cycle. I've been preparing for this. I prepared for like two and a half years, three years, almost almost four. Yeah, seriously. I prepared a while and I needed it because I didn't get educated in it. So I needed that time to do the study myself. Now I know what to look for more. So I'm looking for these big plasma events. I'm looking to show you that you can get three days warning of the denser crap that's going to move past earth and make you feel like crap. And I'm going to show you, you know, what causes weather, you know, because it's not, being publicly shared on the weather channel, unfortunately. So if you need any of the resources that I'm talking about, you know, to start your own study, go to linktree.com slash Ascension Diaries. Okay. All my resources are in there. And then go to my emergency contact list, ascensiondiaries.com, put in your email just so I can get a hold of you about the study developments, any sort of crazy things that happened that you maybe didn't capture or get a hang on a hand onto with your study resources, but you can use some of mine to like build up your resources, build up your study, get a head start, so on. Then I have the telegram chat room, which is t.me slash Ascension Diaries chat. That's 24 hours, international people constantly sharing data and pulling up using a bot, even pulling up the live data feed of some of these resources right in the telegram chat room. So it's really cool. That's a station for you. If you want to have it as, and start your own auxiliary study and begin studying your body, studying your family, studying the fauna in your area with regards to this peaking solar cycle 25 and the weather shifts that are going to happen this fall or this shift of season. Now that we're moving into that autumn energy, it's coming up. It's coming up very fast. Okay. So one more thing to say that's confusing. Hold on. I see some comments here. Yes. Oh no, I'm not pro sunblock. 
at all, you guys. So just a mention on like how to protect yourself from the sun. I don't. <laughs> I don't put anything on me to protect me from the sun other than clothing. So I use hats and shirts and so on to like cover my skin if I need protection. But I'm not using sunglasses unless I'm driving and looking directly at the sun or doing some sort of activity that requires me to not be blinded for short term periods of time or whatever. Otherwise I don't wear them because it'll mess with your brain. It'll ma mess with your, the way that your skin responds to the amount of sunlight and radiation you're getting. So you need your eyes to be free. If you wear, if you wear glasses, you're also screwing yourself, unfortunately on that. So when you're outside and you don't need to be wearing your glasses, don't, don't wear them and get yourself that organic exposure into your eyeballs from the sunlight. If you notice that they started spraying the sky a lot that day, maybe you can avoid exposing yourself to that. That seems to be a common thing. Like most of us aren't really playing outside when that gets really heavy. It seems to be that instinct is like, oh, just let it settle. And they can go back outside or wait till it rains or something. Then you can get your exposure. Just go intuitively, but don't cover your eyes if you can help it. And just use hats and clothes to cover you up if you need to literally get out of the radiation because it's still too much for your skin. Also, cleaning up what you eat is pretty much another way to do that. And you have to just eat very clean food and basic, just cook raw whole ingredients and don't get any prepackaged foods because that's where a lot of that stuff is, is in prepackaged foods. So you have to buy all your produce and your meat and prepare it yourself. That is the cleanest way to assure yourself, obviously organic non-GMO and grass, <laughs> grass fed and finished bison is my preference, but meat as well. Be extra careful, I guess. Yeah. Seed oils and so on that sneak into these packaged foods and restaurant foods basically are a concern. So just keep on it. Do your heavy metal detoxing all the time. Do detoxing all the time, all the time. Keep innovating with the detox. You're keeping ahead of like the major amount of radiation we're getting solar cycle 25. So if you're being pushed to be healthier, it's, I'm assuming it's because of the radiation is peaking and you're instinctively protecting yourself and doing what your ancestors probably did to protect themselves during the heightened part portions of sunlight and so on. It's, it's a fascinating study. It's a continued study, but also I want to encourage you to fearlessly enjoy the weather because the fear aspect of weather is inhibiting our mutual collective conscious ability to be the weather and be our planet. So take your sovereignty back. You can say, I am a divine sovereign being, and I have a say and a participate with this planet, with my reality, with the weather, with the sun, with our cosmos, and with my DNA in general. So just to give that power back. If someone thinks that they know everything or know it all about weather and so on, you know, that's still just one study. That's just one researcher or one researching group. You have to compare them with other researching groups for it to be scientifically viable. You cannot have a monopoly on science and on a theory or you know, you can start the theory perhaps, but you can't monopolize it. You have to be able to, again, let other people replicate the research themselves and then compare your notes. And that's just so important. So I don't have my own telescope to look at the sun all day to compare what the satellite imagery is showing me. So I can't see it for myself and then see it online matching up. But there is that accountability possible. There are people doing that. So it would have been a it would have been known already that what we're seeing on these satellites isn't real, but we do see time cut out of this satellite footage and so on as an example of the drama. But get yourself the equipment you need. I'm I'm gonna talk about this now, which is 
what you can do now to prepare yourself. So watch my past classes and follow my x.com slash Ascension Diaries to see other heliophysicists. That's step one. So if you, I have playlists on my YouTube for this space weather class playlist. So that's one resource I'm giving you and some help right now. Next thing I want you to do is rejoice in your freedom. So use these tools and that I'm offering you and that other people are sharing online, use them daily, record your own information, record your own screenshots, get your own screenshots, compile the data, however you need to. Some of you are definitely more detailed than I will be about compiling data because it's just the personality type stuff. So do it your way continue doing the research your own way. We need to rejoice and enjoy the freedom of access that we have and use it. Otherwise it's just going to dwindle and there won't be enough voices to protest against it. So make sure that you're always demanding that these, the innovation continues with this. So you can be a part of the innovation yourself by, like I said, getting these telescopes and so on that you can look at the sun, taking solar imagery Getting involved in the conversation, you know, watching all of the journals being published on the science journals and so on as well. If you are more of a reader, because that stuff is really cool. I want you to be encouraged to fearlessly share your research and your observations. A lot of people have moved into this and have made their account also a place where they post these anomalies and this space weather information just to talk about it, just to reflect about it. And everyone who sees that, who has a kid or a grandma or a job or an employee, like they're seeing somebody not be able to handle it, or they're seeing themselves not be able to handle it. And just to have seen your posts, like, Hey, the space weather's a little crazy today could make a whole huge difference about how they're going to approach. I want to say even their inner child, like how they're going to approach their lives. So please just give them something, some some sort of addition. Don't be afraid. There's much worse stuff being shared at a much higher rate of inaccuracy and irresponsibility online. So just don't be afraid. You're responsible. Share it. You know, don't declare anything, just show people at least a little bit. It'll give them something to go off of, in my opinion. And so you can join my group. You can join my study group if you want on my telegram, like I've been saying before. And then finally, just be a nerd, be yourself, go explore what excites you, no matter what it is, if it's space weather, fantastic. So sharing the study, we're kind of working on now proliferating people who want to study this as we're trying to encourage this just in general to make the numbers mightier, to make the curiosity be physical. And it's, you're kind of taking on your own, like I said, you have to take on your own study so we can make more research like solid. We can make this research more solid because we'll have a lot more perspectives So from 2018 to present, I've been doing the study by myself, but there's also been people who've been following me since then, who've been donating to me since then. There's people who've been uh, sharing, resharing my work and their own work and doing their own page even from this, from the inspiration, from this idea since then. So that's quite a few years we've begun. I mean, this hashtag human resonance and all this stuff is becoming more popular online. And now today I'm just encouraging you to maybe open a new research page online about your own case study on this. You can become a donator or a Patreon member of mine today to help get the information to you in your email on a regular basis. You can start at least seeing the major days, the major information. And then also, yeah, you can also, I want to encourage you to reshare data that resonates with you online. So other people who've been sharing since 2018, you know, I want you to consider leveling up your own equipment. Like I was saying, consider leveling up your own equipment, whatever you're feeling guided to buy, to continue getting research and development going. And then, you know, study the theory is another thing that I want to encourage Don't just take everyone's word for it online that they've properly read the theory and the information. Go read it for yourself. See what context that it's being presented in instead of just these pieces and abstracts taken out. See the context, get the data yourself, 
push it forward. Keep encouraging others to read it. Keep encouraging others to talk about it. If that's something you care about, I want to encourage you to do that now. So when there are major alerts, like I said, I message my Patreon community. I also have my emergency mailing list on ascensiondiaries.com. What you need in your arsenal right now, if you're listening, watching, blah, 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 I want you to go to your app store and download, if you haven't yet, Space Weather Live, the app, please go on your phone, please download it, just do it and put the notifications on. Schumann Resonance app is another one that you should download. That's a, that one you have to pay. It's like 99 cents or something. It's a one-time payment. I'm, you know, working with the developer. They do respond to emails. Their name is Alex. So their person, they're doing this work. They're trying to make a resource to help people. And there is notifications for that too. So it will show you when the the amplification of these earth frequencies are getting louder the app will begin to show you higher and higher percentages or number of numbers on the notification so you'll see it'll be there so when it starts those numbers start going up you'll be like okay our planetary frequency is getting louder basically it's the basics of that get a lightning app i have lightning app so you can have an alert also when there's lightning in your area, which is another sign that this cosmic energy is grounding down where you're at. And you can then check the globe and see where it's the most lightning on the planet. So maybe there's a lot of geopolitical crap going on in that same area, just because the energy there is grounding in and is changing. There's like al alchemy happening in that moment over that spot where the lightning's hitting. So it's very cool. Another big app you should get is the Quake Feed app because this will give you earthquakes and wildfire information and it will notify you also. And this is amazing because again, lightning causes wildfires and also lightning gathers around volcanoes and these earthquakes gather around, you know, volcanic explosions too and tsunamis and so on. So Earthwatch, those are some apps. Then you can go to spaceweather.com every single day to check in what is their top article of the day. And they'll usually give you some sort of forecast. Like today we're expecting things to be quiet or, hey, this is the last solar flare. You should look at this. It's pretty good data, pretty clean, really good website. Again, follow my Twitter or it's x.com now slash Ascension Diaries to see what I'm reposting because that's where I'm getting the freshest fruit. I'm honest. The freshest fruit is coming from my Twitter and these heliophysicists I follow and Space Weather Live also has a Twitter. So it'll inform you through Twitter also. So if you prefer that, go ahead. I just have to tell you what apps I'm using, what you need, in my opinion, to like continue being a good guardian and moving forward with this information as a active study. So here's a picture of, and just heads up, I'm using Bible quotes on this. So not to just be weird about it off, like off the off handed, but there, this was just a part of like a collage I made for us today. And it just kind of came through that I was looking for these types of quotes. And I like checking the Bible for things I'm thinking about and seeing what what certain quotes are in there and seeing if it kind of molds well, it's like a collage. I don't exactly, I'm not coming at you with a specific biblical verse to change your mind or do anything to you. Like, it's not about that. It's very much about this collage of ideas that I'm kind of trying to show you I'm doing with Ascension Diaries and you can just take it and go whatever. But there has been a lot of anomalies, which I have pictures of here that I'm constantly posting. The occurrences that happen with the space weather, for example, here on the bottom left is a bunch of Aurora Borealis. That happens when there's a ton of solar radiation coming at us from the sun. So watching what the sun does directly influences what the Aurora is doing and the lightning, like I was saying. That's just public knowledge. You can go find it. Those two, it's like, it's like those links aren't connected. It's like if you did research about lightning, they would probably maybe have one hyperlink about maybe about solar weather, maybe. And then again, if you went into Aurora Borealis, they would maybe have one thing about lightning in there. 
it's very, it's like those two worlds are being held apart, but they're very much connected in my opinion. It's interesting that this is cutting off part of the quote. But yes, so here top left, there's the sun here. So this is a very famous picture from last year, November 23rd, where whoop, the sun was actually showing like a happy face. And these are coronal holes, these dark spots. That's what those are. They're coronal holes. You can look them up. Here on the right next to it is a large solar flare that we had on the May 19th, and it was from this large sunspot, which is a different anom a different issue on the sun's surface. Coronal hole, sunspot, they're two different things. Coronal holes are way bigger, way less of a big deal. Sunspots are very important. They cause the flares and they're magnetic in nature. And so when the polarities hit each other, there's just this spark of life that happens. It's pretty incredible. There are then when this spark happens, if you move more to the right, this is when we get coronal mass ejections. And this is where all the matter on the surface of the sun has to move out of the way from this magnetic explosion that the sunspots just went off and did. So all of this matter has to move out of the way, this plasma and so on. And so it shoots off the sun surface and some of it just continues off into space and doesn't get sucked back in. So we see that visually. And those are the biggest things you can see visually off of the sun. They don't always mean we're going to have crazy space weather because they go in different directions from earth, but they usually do mean that we're going to have space weather. So it's pretty easy to tell big explosion off the sun. We're probably going to be feeling it. <laughs> it's, it's a massive the sun's massive. You can see here on the bottom right, there's a sunspot that was the size of what, like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven Earths across or something like that, that happened on the sixth month here. So what was that? That's June, June 28th. Yeah, that was right before all this crazy stuff happened on the first, but this was a sunspot that was very massive. You could visually go outside with the proper gear pretty much and look at the sun and see the spot. It was that prolific. Like it was that big. That's a big deal. So we watch those anomalies and share about that here in the middle here is another kind of summarized image of a solar flare, which is the biggest thing you need to watch out for. Solar flares are by far the most interesting intense events that happen as the solar cycle gets to its peak. That's when more solar flares happen. We're watching actively every day for these. So here was one that happened very beginning of this year was the largest. It was a X 2.2. I believe this was the X 2.2 flare. And this is a summary of imagery that shows it. So here on the left, that's the actual flare. And it was giving off X-ray radiation to the level of X 2.1 or something like that which is a scale you can look up, the X-ray radiation for solar flare scale. It's just the way they measure these flares. They just picked X-ray. Out of all the electromagnetic spectrum, X-ray was the one for some reason. I actually don't know why. Maybe I should, sorry, but I'll maybe see if that information finds its way to me. When it, mean, when it means to, it will. So here again on the bottom, this is another image that goes with this flare. This is the instant impact image. Like this is the area on earth that was getting most radiated or was in the daylight basically when this flare occurred that we can see from earth. Cause this imagery is between taken between earth and the moon are these satellites. So they're a little bit off from the planet and getting a different angle of the sun. But if we can still see those flares from these, this equipment, you can see it from earth and it is going to have glanced us. It's going to have radiated us this magnetic flash and it shows you right away. And the in notifications, this is often what you'll see is that this chart where it shows you where were we getting direct sunlight? Like where is it noon on the earth and how radiated did it just get pretty radiated? And that's going to continue. So what else do I have to say? I have these quotes on here and I can't even see, I can't even read some of them, but this one 
it just feels very like we have the scientific side and then we have like this biblical stuff that I, that I feel and comes through. And so I look it up in the Bible and I'm like, Ooh, that's a good one. That's a good quote. That's kind of what I'm looking for is the vibe about what I feel the sun is doing. And it is good news. It is wonderful energy that you can engage with the sun in my opinion. And like there were some Bible verses that made me think about it. Like this one with John and the right, like this is the bread, which cometh down from heaven that man, that a man may eat thereof and not die. Like this is the prana. This is the mana. This is the, this is the photons. Like we literally eat food for the photons. So we are getting more photons from the sun and we are being nourished in my opinion, potentially during the solar cycle. So it's maybe a a time of great nourishment of great growth in the crops and so on. So I'm, I'm allowing that to still be a truth that is potentially playing out for us. Also talking about the lightning in the Bible is mentioned a little bit. Also talking about judgment, passing judgment on other people researching this. It's like, we're above that. We're not here to judge. We just want to get, we just want to enjoy ourselves. Like it's our mutual son let's enjoy the data, pick and choose what you like and continue digging into it, you know, make some theories, follow through. It'll, it'll be very rewarding, you know? So with, with this energy that's cascading down through our atmosphere, ionosphere again, is at the top of our atmosphere around the earth. And then there's anomalies like elves and sprites and the aurora, basically, that is a very high up in the atmosphere. It's the very high up events, but they do happen. And this is another physical visual evidence of this energy grounding into the earth circuit. There's situations like blue jets and like upward super bolts and stratosform regions. There is there is situations where the lightning will go down to the ground, where the lightning will go up to the clouds where, you know, and there's these, this was just an image I found online, basically these temples just showing how they are built to exchange this energy to also be the node of this like final communication between the cosmos and the earth ground and grounding this energy as it moves past the earth from the solar wind. So just keep asking yourself, keep asking everyone, where does the lightning come from? This is a major key, again, for this research is illuminating that, realizing the hole in people's perception of our reality of like, where's the lightning coming from? Okay, well, you're missing a whole part of how we're deeply entwined with the solar radiation. So here's another example of that. The sun, like these big, big plasma ejections that are happening right now is always sending solar wind our way. Our magnetic field of earth is always pushing up against it and protecting us while it's being funneled. All this energy is being funneled into the poles. So usually the storms are more intense, the poles, I would say, and the aurora borealis, which is evidence of this friction of all of this energy grounding in and beginning to circulate into the inner workings of our atmosphere and so on. It kind of starts at the poles. So we have this amazing protective energy through our magnetic field of the earth and all of these other bodies in our solar system all have these magnetic fields and this gravity and so on. It's, it's wonderful system where works great, but how we're talking about it just isn't there yet in my opinion. And so that's why we're here. So another big question you can ask people or ask yourself continuously is where does the aurora aurora borealis come from? We're going to potentially see more aurora borealis that's going to be stretching further and further south or north from the poles. This is what is projected as more solar activity increases, which could be happening at the end of this year. That's what's being projected. So the... KP index is what they use to measure geomagnetic storms or these aurora borealis storms. And again, the higher the number, the farther south or north this aurora borealis will be shown. I know they call it a different name in the south, but let's just continue. This wrapping of this light or this proof of concept that there is major friction going on with the magnetic fields and the particles of the sun and our atmosphere. 
this evidence is maybe going to continue increasing. You're going to be able to see more photographs of Aurora Borealis. You're going to be able to go on cruises to Alaska or go to Norway and see more Aurora Borealis the end of this year and into next year as the solar cycle peaks. So this may be of interest to you. Maybe buy that camera. You know what I'm saying? Get your location covered. Check it out. Um, get the evidence that you need and share this information, share this time with your family. It's just a cool event that's happening as well as the eclipses. I know some people don't want to go outside during eclipses, but this is another major, it's a similar kind of thing, but eclipses happen way more often. The Aurora Borealis getting stimulated to potentially record not levels and stretching south record distances could be something that is going to happen in our reality soon as evidence of this solar cycle 25 peaking. So very cool. Those apps I told you space weather live will tell you again, how strong is this storm? And it will often will give you information too, about where you maybe can see it. I also follow solar ham. They like to post that information, but yeah, follow me on Twitter. Like I said, and you may be getting more information. Just let me feed you all of the stuff I've gathered and let you go. Like I want to inspire you to go do this research for you, your family, whatever, whatever's calling to whatever degree you need. See the holes in my own research and my, the holes in my own intelligence, even from watching this presentation and pick up, pick up that slack. Like, I don't know what I'm missing in a way too. I just have to put it out there and then you go ahead and go in a direction you need to and don't leave me, me behind if you can help it like i'd love to hear your your follow-ups and more of your research as it develops too so i can keep enjoying it because i really love it so lightning maps is another thing this is lightningmaps.org i have the lightning app i told you about watch the lightning whenever you're starting to feel weird just check out where the lightning's grounding on the earth this was taken today you know at noon so this was hours ago, but this is what we were dealing with in my part of the world. There's a lot of energy grounding off of the coast of Florida, you know, the areas in which those lovely hurricanes begin to start. That's starting to ground in there. That area is being electrified and stirred up and uh, that's going to be common, but we, we're going to still watch it. We're going to still look over everybody and encourage people to move away from coastal areas when storms are getting crazy just to protect yourself. It's about who you know. So make sure you have a lot of friends. Make yourself a social butterfly so you can be sure that you are safe in a, in a way and you can get out of harm's way and people are looking up after you and you them. So that's a big, big theme. Also, I need you to consider trusting yourself more and creating for yourself more when it comes to the space weather research and encouraging just overall to strengthen your aura, your body, and your spirit in whatever ways that you see fit. Again, in the Telegram chat room, we have all those discussions, resources, suggestions all the time, how to do this, how to stay on top of your distress, whatever you're going through. We've had some serious bouts of insomnia in the group, I assuming those people started getting to sleep, but they were keep trying new options, people sharing new options. There's a lot of, there's a lot of, you know, people who know a lot of, of ways to heal you and feel good and strengthen your aura, your body and your spirit, you know, exercise, food, supplements, grounding, you know, even just spiritual work, like connecting with the source or with Christ in a way. That gives incredible amounts of healing and perspective. These are things that are part of the study. It's a part of what I've seen works. And that's kind of what I'm going for is figuring out through all this international information, the symptoms that are common during what times and how to mitigate them, how to deal with them. That's been the biggest kind of win out of all of this. And so, yeah, the Telegram chat room, Ascension Diaries chat is where we deal with that. So if you're having an issue, you're struggling, you want to talk to somebody, just put it out there in the chat room and someone will be like, oh my God, that happened to me. And this is what I did. Done. Fixed. Trust yourself. Trust what direction you want to go with your healing and with your own research. It's the biggest message is just, you know, getting that trust 
and seeing those who clearly are, I want to say, desperate to use this information to prop themselves up and use this information to, I want to say, give authority to their own fear or their own lack of discipline or spiritual discipline. I know that's some big words, but I just have these genuine concerns. And through the study, this is the information that I picked up that I think is the most helpful. It's just keep an eye out for people who are there writing the trends for attention and who seem to be an expert in situations, even though they clearly look like just an average random person. You don't look like somebody who has been studying this concept their whole lives. They just look like a personality who is really passionate at a, about a certain topic at a time. Just keeping your discernment, trusting yourself, staying consistent. Another great thing for the study is record the data every single day, record whatever it is you want to look at, screenshots of the sun, screenshots of the human resonances, whatever it is, just try and get a screenshot of it every day, whatever it is you're studying and write some notes about yourself, how you feeling. Your evidence is the most trustworthy to you because you aren't going to lie to yourself. Hopefully don't do that for the study. Don't lie to yourself about yourself. Be honest. And then you can only hope that other people are honest if you open up your study and post about it and see what their feedback is. And they might lie to you, they might not, but you get to take consensus and carry on to the next thing. And this can be applied to whatever you want to study about, you know, the behaviors or the weather or the goings on of our planet. If that's your, if that's your thing, like just, I hope to help you apply this more from my own experience perspective. So that is the end of my presentation. So there is about 10 people here with the recording. If anyone would like to speak or ask a question or suggest uh, something about this presentation, please speak now or put it into the chat and I will read it out loud. If you don't want to talk, that's fine. This is all going to be recorded like I told you earlier. So just be aware of that while you're consenting to participate in this end portion here to add to this, this, this video for whoever's going to watch this. Okay. Okay. So for natural sunblock, oh, we got some people coming in last second, natural sunblock suggestion here is olive oil really awesome. I know people use coconut oil. I used tallow actually the other day. Shea butter is another option. Yeah. Whatever it is to, you know, follow your instincts. Like I said, like the slide says right now, trust yourself more. We all have a variety of DNA that's expressing in a variety of ways. So just keep following your flow, taking as much data as you, you, you feel comfortable about the situation you have questions about. Okay, we have a comment about the underwater underwater volcano creating a magnifying lens effect. Ah, uh, yes, with the Tonga volcano that happened and a few others that were underwater recently, there was one in Japan that was also underwater with bringing more particulate into the air. Like there's a ton of discussion. Like there is so many areas to discuss. There was a massive volcanic eruption just on the tip of Alaska just a few days ago, also shooting up a lot of ash into the atmosphere, potentially making it a no-fly zone. This was just days before the fires in Maui, I believe, just right up, right all up in that time frame there. And so our air quality and so on, that also has a lot to do with it, but it's the chicken or the egg sometimes with who's causing this air quality shift and why is it being caused? That's a part of the study also. Yay, we get to learn. There's so many things to study. We see, we see a comment saying that Mars lost its magnetic field 
due to its core stopping rotation potentially. So yes, really good concept is the other planets and how they're participating with the solar cycle. There is evidence that there's atmospheres being blown off of some of our planetary spheres here, and there's atmosphere being added to some of them. There's temperatures going up, there's dynamics happening. I think it's a constant stage of like the sun is impressioning on these planets and doing things to it. Life is spraying out of it. The building blocks for life, there's so much to it. It's it's a wonderful study. And we're all we're all just kind of getting the chance to break back into that for some reason as a race or a being right now. But I'm glad we've forgotten all that stuff potentially. And we came back here to learn it again and enjoy it up for a second, third, however many times we've done this. But for some reason, I love it. And I can't wait to read more studies about the atmospheric changes of other planets because other planets with atmospheres have a Schumann resonance. They have the ability to host mammalian brain life. That's what our Schumann resonances do, our planetary frequency. It is complex enough to mimic our own brain waves and is a reason why we have thoughts potentially. So that's why it's so cool and important. Mm-hmm. We've got, oh, we need some natural bug repellent suggestions also for those of you going out there and enjoying the ground and the dirt and the sunshine and the natural waters. We've got some lavender, citrus is an option. Uh, keep, keep those opportunities coming, like figure out a way to get to be outside. So I'm going to stop talking now in case anyone wants to pop on. I'm just going to give you a few seconds here to shout out anything, any last comments or forever hold your peace and we will end this class. Great. So I'm going to take that as you guys are good. You guys are chilling. Thank you again for coming for this class. I don't know if this is what you're expecting, but I never know what's going to come out of me for these guardian trainings, but I knew I've been listening. I've been hearing the whispers about what people are wondering about right now, where people are at with their, their mentality about space, weather, about weather in general. The biggest question was what causes the weather basically. And great question. I don't know if you've ever, ever asked yourself that question, but a very important question. And my answer to you is it's likely the sun and the cosmic energy that's swarming past our planet at all times as our planet's being dragged behind our sun and our sun's being dragged around in galactic political, you know, gravitational situations. And those cycles are all mapped and been mapped through history on earth. There's a bunch of buildings built all over the earth based off of certain connections where our sun aligns with other stars that are close by that still happens on our planet. And it's because the added sun added energy from our stars aligning and the planets aligning really does have an impact on us. And it has been recorded through time. So this is nothing new, but it's new language, new, it's a new time, new technology, maybe new types of people getting to discuss this that never were privy to this as deeply as we get to with these public resources. So it's a cool time in general in history now, because it is almost like still, there's still some mystery to the sun and mystery to weather and mystery to the history of our planet and mystery to your own capacity and the mystery of what we're all actually doing. Are we on a globe? Are we just simulating this out of our heads? That conversation's still in the air. And I don't want to put my feet firmly on the ground about any of those specific arguments anymore. And I don't never really did. But I feel like that's where people lose friends. That's where I've been watching people who are going down different studies of their theologies about their philosophies of life and what's going on. Planetary shape. It seems to be one that we lose or gain like a friendship over now. And I don't want that to be the basis of where I'm arguing with my work. All of the atmosphere is, you know, there is in the Bible, even they talk about the upper waters. There is some sort of reference to an atmosphere and that 
is still visible to us. We can physically see it, physically watch it improve and impress and shift our lives. And we can see the stars. We can see the planets, everything that's visible. It still is. There still is plenty of evidence that all of that, what is, is visible in our reality, in our environment is impacting you and that tuning forks are also real. And so is entrainment. And so the largest buzzing electromagnetic body is going to be what you entrain to naturally. You can't fight it. You can't fight it. You have to be a part of it. So all of these understandings of physics and even the development of physics in our world and in the public sphere is we're at a time of discovery on that as well. Like there's stuff in the physics realm that hasn't been discussed or taught publicly but you can go online. I'm sure there's YouTube videos now teaching this other physics, this advanced physics. But the more of that that's to come is going to continue to illuminate people's awareness about their own reality. And with what's been disclosed so far with the papers and so on, documents being disclosed, there's talk about you know, being able to ask to project yourself, being able to change your reality with your consciousness. And that's what a lot of the psychedelic um, plants also show you. And in the ancient times of shamanism as was a part of how you went into adulthood was you realized the building blocks and the reality you're in aren't exactly as solid or as permanent as you realize because of these plants can show you another realm and bring you to another realm. And then you can come back and take that knowledge and pursue that humble life in this place while seeing sprinklings of the other experiences that are possible based off of, I'm assuming our own frequency, the own, our own antenna in our pineal gland in our third eye, which is again, a part of the study gradually our whole collective third eye and our experience in our, the shared reality we're in is going to increase and be improved upon as we are the creators and the architects. So that's really cool. And what I believe we're also watching. So with the solar radiation, causing more people to be, I want to say stimulated, which will also cause intellectual understandings of our reality to be stimulated. You know, psychedelic experiences can be made just by sun gazing and fasting. That's, that's the OG way. That's the original way to connect. And so if you're feeling like you need to do a fast and just sit with the sun, I would encourage you to do that and get a deeper connection and maybe a direction of where, where you can be of service about this information, about bringing the sun and this physics and our realities, building blocks back to us. So we may use them with a more efficient means, I want to say, is kind of the goal. And it's been a pleasure to be able to do Ascension Diaries and do this study and meet other intellectual and I want to say psychedelic people who are on the path of pursuing this, this soul's calling to have a greater awareness and effectiveness with their consciousness, with their attention, with their current or their currency that they are so feeling grateful to have as having a body, mind, spirit, to be able to wake up and be here. What is there more efficacy for? Can we have more effective impact? I have so many friends that are asking that question and they go about it in their own ways. I'm doing it this way with a diary so I can study myself and then see what the heck everyone else is up to. And that's gone very well. And we are now pursuing creating a more enmeshed community of support and uh, community support. So again, emergency list on ascensiondiaries.com, put your name in there. So I can give you that emergency information. If I feel a need to tell you an X 20 solar flare happened or a 9.9 .9 earthquake happened, something like that, I'm going to do that through those means. And I'm also going to do that if a fire burn burns down a whole city or a dear friend of mine is going to be homeless with her children. Like I have these issues in my life and in our community that are constantly there, but to have the community and the awareness and all these sensitive healers together, we get solutions a lot quicker and we feel supported while we're being tested 
by our soul as well. So glad to have that resource, been gathering that for years. That's the biggest chunk of gold that I have is connections with people who are also interested in this and studying this to their own varying degrees. Because I at least understand that you care and you have your own investment in it, which a lot of people end up doing pretty quickly when they first learn and see the correlations. They'll see a blast on the Schumann chart, or they'll see a solar flare alert, or they'll see an Aurora Borealis alert, alert on your phone at work. You know, your coworker sees your phone blowing up. What is that? Oh, it's the Aurora. The Aurora is getting, you know, super activated right now. Oh, interesting. Um, because my spiritual beliefs about the Aurora are, it is your ancestors reaching down and talking to you. So this must be why I had a dream about my grandmother last night. And these sort of conversations are very common. And it is kind of like that missing link that I feel like we're just repairing. And once it's, a, you know, publicly known, all of this stuff and publicly practiced and so on, everything I'm saying is going to be redundant. Like I'm going to sound like I'm explaining something super basic, but for some reason, that's not what's happening right now. So I'm explaining this super basic thing, giving you my also personal coding around it to kind of, I want to say, give you the lens in which I'm perceiving and studying this particular field and get my energy about it. And then, you know, if that matches you, great. Otherwise, keep looking for more researchers and send them to me too, so I can improve. But uh, that is the end of today's presentation of this class. Every question that you haven't gotten answered yet, I'd encourage you to go watch my old classes and so on, where I break down how to read more of the charts. It's more technical. Those are all up for free if you can stand it. And if you have a specific question, just always feel free to message me on whatever social media, wherever you are, just message me, say something, comment something. I'm always there. I'm watching. I'm, you know, managing this Ascension Diary space very, I want to say very well. I want to say it is what I do with my time as I'm managing that, answering questions, talking to new people about their theories pushing along the morale, keeping everyone's morale at least high enough to keep going another day. That's been the vibe. And this is now another piece to the Space Weather Classes playlist at 2023 synopsis of where I'm at with the study, how I'm approaching it, and what sort of drama and so on that I'm expecting, and also the best tools that give you the best, I want to say, window into the world of these alerts. You can be a good guardian basically about this. So have a lovely uh, evening, weekend, you know, study. I will see you for the next guardian training on September 18th. So join my patreon.com slash Ascension Diaries to get invited to the next class, which again is a month from now. We're going to have a new theme and discuss something else for your own personal development that was the most important to me based off of this research and what the community has kind of brought back to me. What do they want to know next? What do they want to work on next? So please give me that feedback and I will see you guys on the next one. Next one, excuse me, and enjoy your study. I have certainly enjoyed mine. <laughs> Goodbye, everybody.